Hi everyone. Let's face it, art supplies are expensive. Last month, my sister did a side-by-side -side comparison of her high-end and drugstore cosmetics, and I thought I'd do the same with paint. How would these cheap Crayola watercolors compare with mine? I love Old Holland watercolors, but if I bought the same seven colors in six milliliter tubes, it would cost about 39 times more than the ones from Crayola. That's $79 for a bare bones paint set. And that's the price for tiny tubes like the one at the bottom. The bigger 15 milliliter tubes cost even more. Old Holland's paints are handmade and truly gorgeous. The prices vary depending on the pigments. 18 milliliters of my favorite color, Cadmium Red Light, costs an incredible $30. The nice thing about this brand is their big tubes last forever and you can use every last spec. I started my collection with these big tubes and I'm still using some of them 13 years later. But $143? They're the Rolls Royce of paint. You'd be crazy to buy them if you're an amateur. So let's see how they compare with the cheapest watercolors I could find. I've already painted samples of my old Holland watercolors here. First, let's get rid of this terrible brush. It's plastic, its bristles are uneven, and it doesn't even have a point. Here's Crayola's red. I'm trying to make it as intense as I can, but this is about as dark as it's going to get. The orange looks pretty wimpy next to my orange. But hey, for $30, that cadmium red light had better be amazing. I was actually pleasantly surprised with the yellow. When I was a teenager, I learned how to paint using my little sister's Crayola watercolors. And I don't know if they've changed the yellow since then, but it seems brighter. A respectable yellow. Nothing special or anything wrong with this green. I did notice that as these colors dried, they became sort of shiny, and some of them retained the tiny bubbles that happened when I mixed them with water. Oh, this blue. This is a beautiful blue, and it's exactly how I remember it 30 years later. It was easily my favorite Crayola color. This is a very wimpy purple, and no amount of mixing will change that. This is as dark as it gets, and nothing has changed with this color since the 80s, either. And the brown is pretty so what, with a kind of pinkish undertone. Nothing all that wrong with it, though. The set also contains a black. I don't use black when I paint, but here it is anyway, and it's fine. So let's play with that gorgeous blue. Here's what it looks like when I dilute it with water. It's like a perfect sky blue. Nice. Now let's drop it onto a wet surface. It turns into blue fireworks, and this odd neon blue happens along the perimeter of each dot. Not sure why that is or if it's good or bad. I'll do the same with my turquoise paint, which is by Winsor & Newton. I like it better than Old Holland's. These dots are not as explosive as Crayola's, so I'm adding extra water to them. Maybe a little too much water. I guess both brands behave the same, sort of, except for that neon thing. I'll say this test is inconclusive, and I'm going to mess it up in a minute anyway. I've wet down the paper, and here's Old Holland's Cadmium Yellow Light on the right. and cadmium red light on the left. Oh, these two love to play together, and this little test always reminds me of a Rothko painting. Then I'll tip my board to let them flow together, and this will mess up the blue dots, but that's okay. Love it. Now let's do that with Crayola. Since Crayola's orange is so wimpy, I'm using red instead. Unfortunately, my light is causing a glare, so I'll speed this up. 
and you'll see that there's not much difference. The Crayola paint on the right is flatter, and Old Holland is more granular, and its pigment settles into the depressions of the paper. Still, wow, very close. Now I'll put some Crayola blue down and drop some purple into it. Ooh, the blue totally devours the purple, which, as I mentioned before, is a pretty wimpy color. Same thing with my expensive colors. First some turquoise, then some purple. When these dried, I could see a nice commingling of the expensive colors, but I could still see them individually on either side of the blob. The Crayola colors became an almost solid dark blue, and the purple didn't put up much of a fight. Also, I don't know if you can see this, but the Crayola sample is sort of shiny. When you buy a paint set like Crayola's, you're stuck with the colors they select, and you can't customize them. For example, if I wanted pink, all I could do is thin down the red to get this. I could add other colors to it, but they wouldn't be able to make this pink, for example. When you buy tubes, you have more options. Next, I want to see how liftable these paints are. My old Holland Alizarin Crimson is on there pretty thick, but with a wet brush and a paper towel, I can reactivate it and lift off most of it. The watercolor paper has a sizing on it, which is a sort of gelatin coating that makes lifting colors easier. And that's very good, especially since Alizarin Crimson is a dye. I'm trying the same thing with Crayola's Purple, and it comes up easily as well. When I used Crayola paint in high school, it took a lot more work to lift it, but back then I wasn't using watercolor paper. Watercolors are transparent, and you can layer them to create new colors. So I'm going to see how these work. Again, Old Holland is on the left, and Crayola is on the right, and I'm not mixing the brands here. Old Holland goes on pretty easily, but look at what's going on with Crayola. It's like the green and yellow are resisting the red. It beads up in a weird way, and the edges of the red don't stay put. Not cool, Crayola. I wonder if that has something to do with the paint's shininess. The packaging says they're washable colors, and paints for kids should be washable, but maybe that keeps them from glazing well. And look at that black on the red. That's just sad. And here's what they look like when they're dry. No contest. Now here's a tough test for watercolors. Are they light fast? Can they handle the sun? I've painted stripes of both brands here. Crayola's on the top and Old Holland is below. I'm covering the left side of this with thick paper and taping it so no light can slide under. and it's 118 on a blazing hot summer day, and I'm gonna leave it out in the sun and check it in a few hours. Okay, so four hours have passed and I'm taking the tape off. I can already tell that Crayola's had some problems. I remember my parents hanging up some of my high school Crayola paintings, and over time, some of the colors changed and they weren't even in a sunny room. So yeah, how about that purple? I point with my pinky a lot. And it's only been an afternoon. Imagine what would happen after a year. Old Holland hasn't changed, but Crayola's purple is now pink. The blue is noticeably less beautiful, and the brown has faded a bit too. The other colors are okay, I guess, but I'm sorry, that's unforgivable, Crayola. All right, so maybe you wanna start painting with watercolors, but you can't afford Old Holland. There are plenty of more reasonable alternatives, such as Grumbacher's Academy watercolors and Winsor & Newton's Cotman range. I use these brands when I took watercolor classes in college, and at less than $3 for 8 milliliter tubes, you can get a nice little set for $20 to $25. They do everything watercolors are supposed to do, 
and their light fastness is very good. They list that on their tubes. And if you get super serious about watercolors like I am, like if you want to do it for a living, you can try out these brands professional ranges or Old Holland or some other brand and do it a little at a time if you want to. But you don't have to. These student grade brands are just fine and every painter has different needs. But nobody over the age of six needs to be painting with Crayola paints. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thanks a lot for watching.